Hi, welcome to another Mentoring Moment. I'm Dr. Baron Gilfillan, and we're in a series called The Power Principles of Life, and they all begin with the letter P. And the topic today is going to be the power of persuasion. Persuasion is a, just a, a critical thing that we need to understand. We need to see it in the Scriptures, and we need to also become better at persuading people uh, to believe in Christ, to to learn the truths of the Word of God, to be able to get good doctrine. And um, there's a great quote that I love. It's in my book, uh, Pursuing Maturity. Um, it's this one by Jim Rohn. It says, if the truth is not enough, then we need to become stronger at presenting it. If the truth's not enough, we need to become stronger at presenting it. So we we are required to to take the truth that God's given us and present it in a, in a powerful way and to use whatever means God gives us. We look at Jesus' life and the Scriptures and the New Testament and Old Testament as well. We see that God is in the business of persuading people, um, and there's a devil that's trying to, st- not, you know, to stop them believing, um, but there is a war going on, and persuasion is a very key important part. And the number one sort of most spectacular uh, way that Jesus uses in the New Testament and in the Old Testament is signs and wonders and miracles. And um, we see that he does these, he does these signs and wonders. In fact, there's a scripture um, in the Old, in the New Testament in the book of Corinthians 1, uh, verse 22, it says, For Jews require a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. And so the signs are very, very critical, very, very important. Uh, They're a great part of God showing and persuading us that it's Him, that He's with us. And Jesus fed the 5,000 or the 20,000. He uh, walked on water. He healed the sick. He did all of these type of things. They're all part of His persuading people that He was who He said He was. And then we, uh, we see then that sometimes we also have to remove barriers. Sometimes people just have a barrier in their mind as to why they can't believe. And, and uh, we see that most clearly with Thomas after the resurrection. And he's like, unless I put my hand into his side and my fingers and into his uh, you know, nail prints, I'm not going to believe. And Jesus actually appears the, uh, a week later and he says, okay, Thomas, come on, put your fingers in my hands, put your hand in my side. And he removes the barrier. And then he falls down and says, my Lord, my God, Thomas becomes a believer. And Jesus persuaded him with actually removing a barrier that was in his mind. But there's many other examples of that. And sometimes we have to do that, remove a barrier. It's one of the reasons I put a chapter in my book, Pursuing Maturity, which deals with, um, you know, the six days of Genesis. And I brought a PhD physicist, uh, Dr. Gerald Schroeder from Israel, to, uh, to lay down. He's a Hebrew scholar. He's a, he's a you know, PhD from, from MIT. And um, he's a physicist that understands so much about uh, science and, and every other uh, area of, of physics. And he basically lays down the six days of Genesis, that it was six 24-hour days, but in today's terms, it was also 15 billion years. And he lays down a compelling understanding because it's a barrier in people's minds if they think, oh, well, six days, it can't possibly be, that the Bibles can't be true. And uh, actually, it is 100% true. And Dr. Schroeder's watched six atomic bombs explode, and he, um, this guy understands physics and was able to explain it. So that's a very, very important part. And then you know, um, we also need to sometimes use the arts and uh, and to show people uh, stories that illustrate truth. I think of the Passion of the Christ, and I think of how with that one movie, um, they were able to show the life and the death and the resurrection of Christ. Well, mainly, um, we're looking at the actual crucifixion. And that movie reached a billion people. It touched a, a generation. There's an, an enormous number of great Christian movies coming out. Jesus used parables. He used stories. He used the arts. He used, um, uh, you know, uh, the sheep and, and, and goats and he used every kind of animal, every kind of, he used so many illustrations, objective lessons, and he used the arts and he used nature 
to be able to illustrate spiritual principles. And so we need to be able to use it to persuade people. We need to use all of those tools, and we need to be creative in every kind of media form, radio, television, film, and, me and every kind of media. I'm believing in all of that. We need to persuade people using that. And then the fourth area is really um, we need to overcome perceptions. This is a whole area we would call apologetics. And apologetics is such an incredibly important part. I read the story of the conversion of, you know, C.S. Lewis. And it wasn't like a one-time moment that suddenly he became a, a Christian. He, he actually said he was the most reluctant person because it really took a lot of different factors. And sometimes people are like Nicodemus, they're searching. Jesus doesn't say, I'm going to lead you in the sinner's prayer. He just says to uh, Nicodemus, he, he begins to speak to him into his life and challenges thinking. And we need to have uh, that area of apologetics. We need to be able to, you know, read books and to have things put down that challenge people's thinking and get them to look at nature and other things like that. And then the final area is uh, sort of one of the most difficult ones is that, you know, the Bible says that um, that fear is actually an important part. And, and Paul says these words, he says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We'd, we, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. But he says, we, we know the judgment. We know what's coming. We know what's heaven and hell's about. And so because of that, we the, the terror of God, he says that because of that, that, that fear of not people not you not wanting people to go into hell or to in, be in a lake of fire or to be you know in eternal torment we persuade people because we know the terror of the lord and um i think the greatest story in the scriptures uh that jesus told was the story of lazarus um uh you know the rich man and lazarus and this actual uh interaction that happens between you know, um, the bosom of Abraham, which represents, you know, paradise and, and heaven. And then you see Lazarus in hell and, and a rich man, you know, has had everything and he just didn't take care of the beggar at his gate. And then there's this, this interaction, which is, which is, this, you know, it's terrifying in many respects because the guy is there and he, he's in torment and he can't ever get out of there. And he's talking to uh, to the to the rich, to, at least to Lazarus, and he's talking to Abraham, and they have this interaction. And there's a tremendous, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, um, amount of truth that's in the story. Many Bible scholars don't believe that it's actually a parable. They believe that it's a true story. Uh, there's real names that are in it, and there's also um, at the end of it some real details and facts and Abraham, and you've got the rich man, and you've got the Lazarus. And um, at the end of it, I just want to read what the rich man says. He says to them, he says, I beg you, therefore, Father, speaking to Abraham, that you would send to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that they he may testify. So send Lazarus to my father's house. I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And, but he, and he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, uh, He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. And the truth of that entire story is that the main thing God's given us is his word. And he's told us that that word needs to be something that we take seriously and that we really imbibe into our lives. And if we won't believe his word, then even though we do signs and wonders and we have parables and we have great media and we have all these other elements, His Word needs to be what we believe in. We need to persuade people that the Word of God is real and true and is for our lives today. So the power of persuasion, we need to learn to be like a fisherman. We need to learn the art of persuasion so that we can impact our world. Until next time, God bless you.